All right, so I just returned to a job here. The electricians came and installed the power going to the, into the unit. Um, these units are both three-phase, which I was just saying in one of my other videos that I don't do a lot of three-phase equi equipment, but occasionally we do. Um, so we're gonna see how it looks in there and then actually start up the systems and make sure they're spinning the correct direction. Uh, these units do have scroll compressors in them and scroll compressors, if spun backwards for even a short time, can be severely damaged. So when you initially start them up, you have to make sure they are spinning the correct direction and not going backwards. You can tell the electricians were here. They left some treasures for us. There's the scroll compressor on the unit. Right here this sticker explains, scroll compressors operate in only one direction. Reverse rotation will result in permanent damage to compressor. Proper rotation must be checked at startup. Failure to comply will avoid warranty. If the compressor is experience, experiencing low amperage draw, Similar discharge and suction pressure, increased noise level, it is operating in reverse. Switch two line voltage connections to correct. So very straightforward on the instructions for how to do that and very clearly displayed on the outside. Even has a cool scroll symbol. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll show you guys how to do that. It is pretty straightforward. So here's what we have inside the electrical compartment. This is on the smaller unit. Um, but we've got a capacitor for the fan motor no capacitor for the compressor since it's three phase. Of course they also could have done the motor three phase but evidently they decided to do a single phase motor. Um, and then we have our contactor with three leads coming into it and that looks good. I don't see any problems. I just hooked up the low voltage to this wire here. Some units will have a contactor with only two poles in it and then the third lead just gets tied directly to the compressor. I don't like that style as much because when the contactor drops out, I like it to just have no power, um, like in this case. So I'm glad to see that they did put in a three pole contactor on this equipment. And then of course we've got a ground wire as well. So what I do is, you can see the contactor's not pulled in, there's no 24 volts. I fire up the unit at the disconnect. Now we'll check and make sure that we do have proper voltage on the contactor. 249, 246, and 246. So this must be our wild leg at this location. It has a little bit higher voltage, um, but that shouldn't be an issue. That looks good. So now the system can actually be started up. We're gonna put our low side hose on. And this is just to check the phasing, but we will probably put the high side hose on because we'll have to charge this thing up properly. But yeah, now you can see we've got a lot of pressure in there. And when I push in the contactor, we can measure the amp draw on one of these leads here. Let's see if we're getting any low amp draw. And I'm just gonna push this in for a moment and we're gonna watch, we're gonna watch both our amp draw and our low side pressure. This should start sucking down almost immediately. So three, two, one, go. Okay, see how our pressure didn't start sucking down? I'm not sure how many amps it was drawing, but it looks like we need to switch two of the leads. Let's try it one more time. Yep, we're only drawing, well, between four and 10 amps, I guess. So, that being said, we'll just loosen or shut this back off. And then to switch it, we just gotta take these two leads off and flip them, and that will change the rotation of the motor. Interesting style of connector they used on here. See those? Kind of neat. They're like ferrules. So I'll just move this lead over to here. And this lead over to here, just like that, and tighten these back down. Make sure everything is good and secure, which it seems to be. Now, throw this back on to watch the amp draw, fire the power back up. And we'll push it in. We should see our low side pressures come down and our amperage should be different than what we were seeing. There we go. See, it's 
see the pressure is sucking right down. And we're drawing 8 amps versus before it was like 4 and then jumped to 10. So that's good. Now we're spinning the correct direction. So we'll probably go check the other one quick and then I got some stuff to do before I can actually let these systems run. But I wanted to make sure that I got the phasing correct on each one. So, so it looks like we're good to go on this one. I'm going to take the hose off and we'll go over to the other side and check that one. Yeah, looking nice. So the electricians ran this wire in black, which is very nice. So they could keep the units straight as far as which one was which. Um, so we're gonna flip the power on. Ooh, even shut the lid by accident. And then we'll check the voltage, make sure that that's good. 246. 245. 48. Got good consistent power to there. Switch to amps alternating current. And now we can push the contactor in. And like I said, we should see this pressure start coming down right away. And we should see, I guess if it's similar to the other one, around like 10 amps. Both of them spinning backwards. So, just like on the other one, we're going to swap two leads. Um, and then try it again. Alright, just like that, I have swapped two leads. Let's try this again. Oh, gotta turn the power on first. Alright, and here we go, we'll try this again. There we go, pressure's sucking down. Drawing 12 amps. That looks great. So, that should be it then. I'm going to go finish up what I have to with the condensate and stuff. But now you know how to check if a air conditioner is actually spinning the correct, correct direction. Um, again, this is only on three phase equipment that you have to do this. Um, and you, you do want to actually check the pressure, not just like listen to it. Because I actually didn't think they sounded that loud when they were going in reverse. Um, and I had worked on a couple of other three phase air conditioners earlier this year. And the electrician told me, yep, uh, they're both spinning the right way. I checked them both. I had to switch one, is what he told me. I was like, oh, okay, I'll probably just double check it quick. And I went up, put my gauges on, and one of them was still spinning backwards, so I had to have him go switch it. And I asked him, how did you tell which direction it was spinning? And he's like, oh, I just pushed the contactor in, and if it sounds smooth, then I know it's good. And if it sounds rough, then I switch the leads. But... Really, I don't think that's actually a great way to check. You need to see if the pressure is dropping. Um, if the pressure is not dropping, it is definitely spinning backwards. So, anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys later. Look at the condensate running out of the building. Beautiful. That was actually a big reason they wanted air conditioning here, is to get rid of some of the moisture. There's just a lot of humidity. Alright, first time the condensate pump is running. Oh, it didn't even get it all the way up. Oh, well, it got rid of some of it. Show you where it dumps to. So it pumps from there, up, over, out. And then it dumps right here by the air conditioner. And I actually screwed this to the pad so that it'll always be elevated a little bit and the water will just soak into the gravel out here. Now you might be like, that screw is going to rust off. It's actually stainless steel, so it's not going to rust off. So, rest easy. Um, I maybe could have used some fittings here, but I think it's gradual enough that it's not going to be a problem, so I'm just not going to worry about it. Um, yeah, no, it looks, looks good. We did have to add some refrigerant to this one. Um, otherwise, really looking beautiful.